Hello, welcome to NextGen Software Services. I'm John Novak, and in this video, we're going to go through volume analysis with our market flow. Uh, so, when you look on the education page, you'll have uh, this video on there. Um, before we get into the market flow, I really want to spend a couple minutes and I want to talk about trigger line and Fibonacci reading. The same exact slide that you saw in the trend trade video, the edge trade videos, it is of the most importance that you have correct Fibonacci and trigger line reading. If you do, you're going to be very confident in the trades that you're placing. Um, bottom line, you must have the correct look, the same look every single time. This is the difference for being consistent or being inconsistent. Um, you also, if you don't read the fibs and triggers correctly, you're going to do the wrong trades, you're going to end up losing, and you're going to have a, a hard time with trading in general. The main focus of what NextGen does, and the main focus of what you will be doing when you're learning our software, is you're going to be learning a look that you can control. And literally, the only thing that you can control before you place a trade is the look of your indicators before you place that trade. Um, there's nothing else you can control. You can't control whether it goes up, whether it goes down, whether it follows through or not. So the only thing that we truly have control over is the look of the indicators before we take a trade. If you do the same look over and over and over, this is the key to confidence. Um, Real quickly, I want to talk about this, and again, I harp on this a lot, um, so you've seen this before, you'll hear it again. This is the spreadsheet, it's on page two, there's a link to it on page two of our trading plan. And, you know, again, I put things like the most important, uh, you know, one and two things to do, the most important two things. You need to annotate your charts, and you need to post them in class. Um, and then once you post them in class, you need to save this spreadsheet. And you need to start tracking your own trades. The only way you're going to know if you've done the same trade over and over again is if you can go back and look at them. So again, keeping with the same look, same trade. What's the look? What's your trade? Um, on our spreadsheet, obviously, we've got a lot of pictures. I mean, these are examples of just about everything that we've ever taught. Um, so from termination conditions to market flow conditions. So again, just use this spreadsheet, make sure you're tracking your trades. Um, so we're going to get in and we're going to talk about market flow components first. And when you look at the market flow overlaid over the bars, um, one of the things that you'll see is you'll see a bunch of green dots and a bunch of magenta dots. And it's literally not very tricky. If there's a green dot, that's an individual price that has more buyers and sellers. That's all it means. There were more buyers here and here and here and here than there were sellers. And then, you know, the flip side is on the way down, there are more sellers at these prices. Not a lot of them, but, you know, and again, this is what we're going to be doing is reading the volume. We're going to listen to what the market says at the right time. Um, so again, pretty simple, right? Magenta dots, green dots. Um, this is one that confuses a lot of people. They're like, well, there's green dots and magenta dots on the same bar. What does that mean? Well, at this price, there was more buyers and at this price, there was more sellers. Same thing here, more sellers, more buyers, more buyers, more sellers. And, you know, usually that's when the market will go sideways and choppy. You know, not very uh, tricky, right? It doesn't matter. If you're not at a trading spot, it doesn't really matter. Um, so again, you're going to see this a lot where there's dots everywhere and don't worry about it. The only ones that we want to pay attention to are the ones that will actually have a trade. Um, on each bar itself, there are going to be two horizontal lines. Now this is uh, adjustable. We have it set for two ticks, but you can make it a little bigger if you're doing you know, 13 range or 21 range bars, or if you want to experiment. Um, anyway, we just left it to two, it worked real well. These are the two prices average where there's a lot more buyers or sellers, there was more volume, if you will, at this particular spot. And every bar has these two lines because every bar has a spot where there was more contracts traded at that price. 
or shares if you're on a stock, whatever, either way. Um, so again, just remember, just like the dots, every bar has a bunch of lines. And again, they're not important unless you're actually executing a trade. So, and we'll show you later with the strategy, how the strategy uses these lines to determine where you're going to get in or out of your, you know, in your position, not out. All right, white paint bars. Now, again, the market flow is a collection of a lot of different bars, dots, and colors. And if you just look at this chart, you're like, oh my goodness, that's a lot. It's really, really, really important that you absorb what these things mean and why they're there and how they happen so that way you can confidently apply them later. Not every bar is a signal. Not every dot is a signal. and Not every line or bar color is a signal. Um, they're just a representation of what happened. So let's give it a definition first. A white bar with magenta dots is a volume breakout of the prior bar. It just means that it's the first time that you've had multiple magenta dots below the prior bar and below the prior high volume area. And, you know, these alternate back and forth, one down, one up. So you can see pretty easy. That's a white bar and it's down and it's below and there's a bunch of dots. So that's it. That's the whole white paint bar logic. Pretty easy, right? Same thing in reverse. White paint bar up but there's green dots in the high volume area and the dots are all above everything else. Lo and behold, it's a volume breakout to the upside. Now, you know, again, this is where you get green dots and magenta dots, but remember it's an alternate one down, one up. So this is technically a down white paint bar, even though it has three green dots in it, it's still a white down paint bar. And then, you know, conversely, this is why it's a little bit confusing to some people in the beginning. This is a up white paint bar because there's a bunch of green dots in it and the last bar was down. And then finally, same thing, white paint bar down with a bunch of magenta dots. So it's a down bar. So just going back, white paint bar down, white paint bar up, white paint bar down, white paint bar up white paint bar down and that's pretty much it um, so again um, there is a rare exception where you may get an up white paint bar and then they take out the low and then you get a new white paint bar up um, usually the exception not the rule usually these things alternate that's why if you have one down you're not going to get another one down so it's kind of like a one and done situation um, which you'll use this later, so just remember that. <clears throat> One of the other components of the white paint bars that um, we've come up with over the years is that if you get a white paint bar up and then you get a, any bar, subsequent bar later, could even be six or eight bars later, sometimes it is. If you do get a close above the high of a white paint bar, we're going to draw in a green line from the little black lines right there, the top of the high volume area. And we call this a high volume area as well. Um, so technically there's a high volume area on every bar, but that when you hear us say HVA or high volume area or, you know, the high, you know, I'm buying the high volume area, 99.9% .9 of the time we're talking about buying the green line or, you know, vice versa. If it's going down and you get a close below the white paint bar, you're going to get a magenta line. And we'll use this green or magenta line as support or resistance. And again, just I'm just double checking my notes here. Pretty straightforward. Usually we use these once. Sometimes you can use them twice. It just kind of depends on what the trigger lines are doing. Um, you know, if you know, it's just like over here, we'd want to use it for going up because it's green and everything's going our way, but we don't want to use it for up over here because everything's going down. Um, so again, reading fibs and triggers is going to differentiate which ones you use and which direction you're going to use them in. Um, so again, 99% of the time, HVA, we're meaning the line, either green or magenta. <clears throat> now, not every white paint bar is a volume breakout. Technically, it did close lower than the last bar, but it's not going down. 
Um, and there's an input called volume reversals. So if you get a white paint bar down and the next bar is up, it'll draw an arrow on there, which looks suspiciously like a long signal, doesn't it? And I want you to really think about one thing when you look at white paint bars, um, read your two trigger lines on your chart. Obviously, we still look at the larger chart and the middle chart and your trading chart, but really pay attention to the trigger lines on your market flow chart. When your small triggers are crossed up and really strong above the large triggers, guess what happens when we have a white paint bar down? Well, about 90% of the time we get a reversal to the upside. So we're going to use this trigger read along with a white paint bar and we're going to turn it into a trade setup for ourselves. So when the triggers are up strong on all of our charts and you have a white paint bar down, we're going to buy at the market. Now, obviously, if you have support and mid bands or triggers and, you know, reasons and areas to get in here, it's a good thing. Um, so, again, you have to pay attention to the area. But in general, when the triggers are up and you have a white paint bar down, we're going long before the up bar. And it's very important that you understand this before the up bar, because when it's going down, we buy low, and then after the up bar, we say yay, and then we make a bunch of money. Um, so that's what you're trying to do is to buy on the way down. Um, one of the other bars, which you're going to see a lot of, is a yellow paint bar. And a yellow paint bar is nothing more than a volume reversal. And what I mean by that is, and again, I can read it to you, but I'll show it to you. It's just as easy. Multiple magenta dots after green dots on the prior bar. So watch this. This bar going up, see my laser pointer here, has green dots on it. And then the next bar going down has magenta dots. It's a yellow paint bar. Magenta dots down, green dots up, yellow paint bar. Magenta dot down, green dots up, yellow paint bar. Magenta dots down, green dots up, volume reversal. Got it? Pretty easy, right? Those are yellow paint bar signals. Now, just like we're not going to buy or sell every dot and we're not going to buy or sell every line, we're really not going to buy, buy or sell every yellow paint bar. Only paint bars that are at the edges or in a trend can be used. So this yellow paint bar with all the trigger lines going down right here, or this yellow paint bar with everything going down right here and not being at the edge of fibs, totally ignored. They're not even part of, they're nothing. If I could make them invisible, which maybe that's another trick for later, but if I could make them invisible due to the triggers and not being at the right spot, I would, but you're going to have to learn how to pay attention to this one like your life depended on it and ignore these like they never happen. You'll get used to it. What this yellow paint bar will do is it will get you back up to your trend trade short spot. Um, so again, you have to be able to, you know, see what's happening, but not let it scare you out of your short trade because it's just a yellow paint bar. It's nothing more. Now, once we get to the edge of FIPS, you know, that's where the money's made, um, you know, and again, you could get run over at the edge of FIBS, but it's a very definitive spot on our chart. And when we have the edge of FIBS and you have a yellow paint bar signal, many, many times it is a really good signal to take and you get a really nice reversal. So again, you know, there's only two trades we teach technically, right? Trend trades and the edges. This is an example of a yellow paint bar with a trend. This is an example of a yellow paint bar at the edge. You see where we're going with this, right? Okay, now, an antenna bar. And again, we use this term loosely. Some of the kids these days are not going to even know what an antenna looks like anymore. But um, for all intents and purposes, it's two horizontal HVA high volume area lines and the entire body of the bar is below the lines. So this is one, this is one to the upside, this is one to the upside, this is one to the downside, this is one to the downside, 
this is one to the downside this is one to the upside um, like I wrote on here antenna bars are everywhere so you know just like those crazy yellow paint bars or you know the dots or lines that are in the middle they don't count they don't exist you're going to ignore them and this is where the fib and trigger line reading is really 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 important you have to know when to pay attention and when not to you know when to ignore and that's really what happens and you know if you get long and you're scared and you're looking for a reason to get out the market flow will give you a reason or you know if you're short and you're scared and you're looking for any reason to get out the market flow will give you a reason um, so I want you to really think of the market flow as a one bar event at the point of entry for right now now there are some bars that we really really love and you know we call them stranded buyers or stranded sellers and I think you can all relate to this pretty easily if you've ever traded the market have you ever gone long and bought the high tick and you're like what the heck or have you ever gone short and sold the low tick and reversed the market of course you have everybody has um, if you've traded um, so you know and the you know this for us is a visual representation of kind of an exhaustion or a capitulation at the top where there's a bunch of buyers but the market still goes down and it's like all right what gives well if you're at the edge of fibs that really means something to us you know if it's too strong we don't take it of course but if you're at the last fib and the edge of fibs if you get one of these it's a pretty you know serious thing if you're in the middle you know and you get some stranded sellers in the middle of nowhere for no reason you ignore these so you know again I hope I'm stressing this point enough the market flow is to be ignored 99% of the time unless you're at a spot where you're gonna actually place a trade and when you get to the edge you know a stranded seller with an antenna bar that happens to be yellow all of a sudden it's like wow that's three patterns in one bar from the edge of fibs and it really will help boost your confidence if you're gonna place a you know a go long order over here and if you're already long and you start to see more long signals it's like yay 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 and yay all the way up right so again when to ignore when you're not at a trade setup generated by the fibs and triggers and only at the edges and the trends is where we pay attention to our market flow I've made my point right um, the other thing that you're going to see and it's going to happen a lot and one of the most powerful you know we developed the market flow in 2015 and we released it in 2016 so we've got you know five years of watching this thing and you know again there could always be more patterns but one of the most powerful at a top or a bottom is the yellow paint bar followed by a white paint bar even if you don't have a yellow if you had just an up bar or an antenna bar and then you had a white paint bar it's like reversal plus volume breakout it's a really really powerful confirmation from a key spot and again the key is you have to have the right spot and again it's really simple right I mean look yellow paint bar white paint bar what it means is the bottom is good and you see this a lot at termination areas but it means that the bottom is good and even though you know the market was going down there's a really good chance that it's going to go back up and we can determine that by these two bars and as such we can look to buy any type of pullback you know inside of the white paint bar you know between the high volume area which will eventually plot green and you know halfway up I mean somewhere in this area we're trying to buy on the way down you know anticipating that we've actually put in a reversal in the market um, really simple I mean one tick away from the green line is what a lot of people use one to two ticks it just kind of depends on how strong you pop up off there um, you know one or two ticks is not going to make much of a difference unless you don't get a fill if it's a really strong one give up a tick or two so you can get a fill All right. 
again I want to kind of just go through this same concept and show you just a you know another chart here but look this is a concept where we hit you know probably the mother load of fibs three or four time frames of blue Fibonacci support awesome and we get a yellow paint bar from the edge and most of our traders if they're gonna go long this is the bar they're going you know they get the bar and then they get in after a little pullback you know if you're not quite comfortable with that you know you get then a white paint bar confirmation and then it goes up and then you can buy a little pullback and you know again if you're operating on top of the triggers and the fibs and you get another yellow white paint bar which it's hard to see but look stranded sellers and it's an antenna it's like go it's a visual swift kick in the behind if you need a reason to go this is the reason to go this is the reason to go really but that's the same reason right there so and again you'll see the same thing look yellow white from the top yellow white followed by white up with a reversal antenna bar stranded buyers followed by another white paint bar down you see the pattern right it's really obvious seller 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 so you get those two two patterns in a row where the white paint bar is second look over here on the right this is the trend trade so you would already be short after the yellow bar of course you wouldn't wait for the white paint bar what you would say is yay I got a white paint bar after you're already in so you know and again look what happens it really accelerates after that white paint bar after the white paint bar it accelerates after the white paint bar it accelerates after the white paint bar it accelerates um, so again this is some of the things that you can do with you know it's a visual what is the market telling me at any one point and it gives meaning to the bars you know because when we look at our dynamic Renko bars here let's take a look again there's two things that we look at right we look at strong trends and trending triggers until we reach a fib spot and then when we say well if the triggers are weak and inside maybe it turns around how do you know well you know in the beginning when before you have the market flow you kind of have to wait I mean you might have a pivot stop out on the smaller charts or something like that but if you're up at this spot looking for a short and you get this pattern you're able to get short a lot faster before the trend trade happens later and that's really the part about the market flow number one it's confirmation but number two it's going to be a better visual representation because what it means is you know think about it if you're at a top and you want to go short the more people selling up there not buying is going to be better for you don't you agree of course so how do you know how many people are selling well that's why we did the market flow in the first place so we can give some meaning to the different bar patterns and bar colors and the bar dots and the arrows and everything else so we can help ourselves get in hopefully a little bit quicker at the tops or the bottoms and then maybe a little bit more assertively or with more confidence with the trend still want to do the trend trades and you know the other thing about you know the market flow is if the market is trending this strong we don't want to touch any long trades with the market flow so this is the ignore everything long on the market flow area right and then ultimately we make it to support the triggers are inside and weak and then if we get a yellow white paint bar or something like that you know then we can take advantage of it so again reading fibs and triggers is going to be very very important and if you do it wrong look this is probably the biggest mistake people make with the market flow especially in the beginning because you know you're so excited you're like hey I learned a yellow white paint bar combination and man I got it I've seen it a couple times and it works and then you see it and then you get your butt kicked um, you know and again I mean it still technically worked a little bit but it didn't really terminate the trend it was a you know kind of a retracement um, the thing I'm telling you is don't lose sight of the rules 
don't trade against number one trigger lines. And if you're really not at the edge yet or the last Fibonacci resistance, you know, this combination, while you could still trade it, it's going to, if you were short, it's going to make you miss the long trade. And when the trend is going up, the more profitable, easy trade is the long trade. You can see by an antenna bar, probably from your 5-1 chart, to get you up to the edge. See that? And again, this is where people get scared. They're like, oh my God, a, a down arrow. Well, you have to believe that you're going to make it if your other charts tell you. Um, so this is where a lot of people will make mistakes. They'll do too aggressive of a trade against the trend and the triggers. And then if they go long, they'll get scared because there's an arrow, but it doesn't really matter. That arrow doesn't count because we're going up here. Um, so again, just, you know, I feel like a broken record here, so I'm going to go on. The idea behind the market flow is to do what? Help you achieve more profit period if you're waiting for number one trades all day long and perfect trades with perfect everything you're going to be doing a lot of waiting period <laughs> i mean you st I, i'm a hundred percent confident you can make money doing all perfect trades but you got to wait a long time and what we want to do is we want to use the market flow now that you understand reading fibs and reading triggers and all the trade setups we want to use the market flow to take this 400 up to six or 800 a day so bottom line, we want to use it to make more money. Bottom line, you still have to pay attention to your fib and trigger reads. If your triggers are weak and inside, you can start looking for reversals. If they're in a number one look, you better not go short because you will get run over. So again, same rules that we use all the time. And for new users, when I say the perfect look, you know, this is an example of the perfect look. Number one down triggers, number one down triggers, sell a pullback into the area, right? So again, those are the perfect cherry pick, you know, you can't mess them up. Everybody sees them and everybody's going to take them trades. What we're talking about is going a little bit deeper. And, you know, again, look, this is examples now of trades and this is on a micro gold contract. Um, you know, with new users in 2020, we're going to spend a lot of time working on these micro contracts because, you know, if you trade one crude oil or one gold contract and you have a bad day, you can lose three or $400. Well, if you have a bad day on a micro, you might only lose 30 or $40. Um, so look, we're very, very, very strong, uh, advocates of trading on simulator only until you can guarantee yourself to make money. We say it all the time, trade on simulator until you can guarantee yourself you can make money. Fund a small account, three grand. You know, and this is before they came out with all the micros. Um, you could fund an account now at $300 instead of 3000 And, you know, you're not going to make 400 a day, but you're going to make 40 50 60 70 maybe $100 a day on the micros. And you can build your account really slowly, and it's more about process with NextGen than it is um, money off the bat. You have to get the right look and the right trade first. Um, so again, look, this trade over here on the left, it's a perfect trend trade. I mean, 100 out of 100 times, our traders are going to have limit orders here waiting for the short. If for some reason, and you know, this is more of a confirmation, but look, remember the whole, if the triggers are going down and you have a white paint bar up, go short. Well, this is it because we anticipate that the next bar is going to go down and it's at a perfect turn trade spot. I can't stress that enough. You should already have a limit order waiting, but if you don't, then you see this bar to the upside, go short at the market as fast as possible because when it's perfect you don't want to wait for this down bar you're going to miss the trade if you wait for the down bar you're going to be trying to get a fill down here somewhere which is a hundred dollars away on a big contract you know so again getting in on the way up sell high buy low um, and then as the market trades down number one you make your 20 ticks which is awesome but then it puts you in a situation where you're like, well, there's a fib. 
And I got some divergence. Should I do the trade or not? And again, as you're digesting, learning your trades and your looks and your reads, you know, because there's a fib here, it throws up a little bit of caution to you, maybe, let's say. You should do it anyway because the triggers are below everything else, but let's just say you don't. So we'll call the second trend trade not quite as perfect as the first because of little something in your vision that's messing you up. But you should ignore the fib when it's right. But anyway, whole nother story. We're assuming that you're a little beyond reading your fibs and triggers at this point. So let's just say you're like, well, I'll do it if there's a market flow signal. So then lo and behold, from that same spot, you get a stranded buyer antenna reversal bar to the downside. Well, you can get in on a little pullback and feel good about having some confirmation of a trend trade you weren't quite certain about. Pretty cool, right? So again, there are times where you should just, you should have your order there and just be waiting. Um, you know, but again, there's times where you might wait for confirmation. This is where the market flow is really going to pay dividends for you. Um, and then obviously as you trade down to the bottom, you're wondering, Hey, is that the same situation, right? Should I do another short trade? Should I not do another short trade? And then look what happens with the market flow. You get a yellow white paint bar combination, which tells you, no, I'm not going short anymore from the edge of fibs, I'm going to be going long. And this little pullback is probably this little tail right here, which again, it's a, it's an early trade. It's not a pivot stop out. It's not, it's not technically in the books for the two trades that we teach. This is bonus material over here. So you're going long here. And then when the market runs up, you're already up a bunch of money. And then the trend changes over here and you pull back to fibs, right? And we've taught you over and over and over to wait for the synthetic triggers, which will never come, especially when you get all these white, yellow paint bars. So you're like, I wish I was long. And, you know, if you were long already, great. Or if you said, or if you got out up here. You'd say, I wish I was long. And you say, well, if I get a signal, stranded sellers with an antenna bar, I'll go long again. See how that works? So again, depending on the situation, you can use some, you know, moderate, you know, if you have a strong termination with a strong market flow, you can take these little bonus trades once the color changes on the background. Um, again, you know, one of the concepts, just bringing it back again, because it never hurts to go over and over and over. If both the small and large triggers are below the synthetics, you're leaning to the downside, right? When they get inside of each other, maybe it goes back up. And then when all the small and large triggers are above the synthetic triggers, longs are easier. Pretty straightforward, right? This is where we use the market flow to generate extra trades for ourselves. So let's start with the bottom left. Um, this one is horrifically easy. All the triggers are going up. All the backgrounds are green. Everything is perfect. And you get the magic white paint bar down into the spot. So you're so confident in your white paint bar down when all your triggers are strong and up. What do you do? You go long at the market somewhere around here. And then lo and behold, it does exactly what it's supposed to do and it goes up and makes a bunch of money. Now, you make a top. Maybe there's some extra fibs, divergence on all charts, whatever the reason, okay? And again, you're waiting for these synthetic triggers and you're like, man, I'm just not getting the pullback to my triggers. Well, when you look at the market flow chart, you'll see why. Because sometimes the market doesn't give a perfect trade setup. And all of the experienced traders, you see them going, all right, I'm short and out for 20. And you're like, what? Where was that trade? Well, this is the trade. They recognize that we've made a top at fibs and then the triggers have rolled over, most important. And then remember the old white paint bar going down and the next one closes down and we have this pink line that we talk about as resistance. Not, the HVA line or the high volume area line. Well, now when we pull back to this fib and we get, 
uh, dare I say it again, stranded buyers with an antenna bar sell signal from a high volume line and the triggers down, you see where I'm going with this, right? The experienced traders know the top has been made, so they play this different. They're going short at the pink line. They're not waiting for a signal. They're just they're short on a limit, you know, around the line or maybe even a tick below the line, as long as the triggers are down. Then once the market goes down and we make a pivot, they'll pull their stops down. And again, this is a trade that you'll never get waiting for the perfect setup. But look, it pays well. And then, you know, again, if you're short, let's just say 15, 27, 20, give or take a couple ticks. You make your 20 ticks super easy, right? I mean, 30, 40 ticks, <laughs> really. Um, 20 ticks really easy, but 30 or 40 ticks really easy. And then look where we go to. We go to the fibs, and it just so happens that the market went to the prior high volume area that it made on the way going up. Coincidence? I don't think so. Um, and then this next short up here, you know, again, if the triggers are super favorable, you can get another one. White paint bar up into a high volume area with both triggers down. You're going short on the way up, not on the way down. We'll look at this one again in a little bit. Um, again, I wanted to reiterate high volume lines do not get used unless the triggers are at least one. Two's better, but at least one coming off of the top. Um, and, and I show this picture a lot. We've been using this same logic since 2004. I mean, it's 2020. If we get to fibs and we have divergence, which for you guys now is a negative number, and then the trigger lines roll over, we're going to sell a pullback to the trigger lines. I mean, that was our trade, literally our number two trade back in the year 2004. And, you know, the reason I bring this up is because technically it's the same logic. You know, divergence from some fibs at the top and then selling a pullback to the trigger lines at the high volume area with the stranded buyers and an antenna bar. Take your pick. But it's the same logic. We just have more fancy toys now to determine exactly where that pullback is going to happen. So, and again, I just want you to, you know, keep in mind, these are things that we've watched forever. By the way, trade number one, just as it is today, is still a trend trade. Trend down, pull back to an area, go short till you get to the fibs. So, we're still doing trend trades. We're still doing trades from the edges. Obviously, we've gotten a little more advanced over the last 20 years. And again, for those of you guys that are new, I can't reiterate this enough. You have to have the right look on your large, medium, and small charts before you start looking for white paint bars going to the downside. <laughs> right? If you don't have the right look, you end up losing. You can't just pull up the market flow and trade it by itself. It doesn't work that way. So again, that's why I'm reiterating so many of these uh, other concepts. Look at the difference here. And again, this is from the trend trade video, so I'm sure you've seen this slide already. But look, the market's going down. We pull back to the mid band inside the triggers, easy short. Well, this is the one that causes problems. Um, you know, where the small triggers get above the 8-2 triggers, the large chart says down, the 8-2 chart says down, you're like, I want to go short, but I'm not sure where to get in. Inside of this orange circle is where you look at your market flow for a signal. At the spot, of course, and then what happens? You get a short, and then you go short down a support. And then when you get to support and the background color is green and it's the edge of fibs, guess what? Knowing when to stop doing trend trades is in the slide from the trend trade video. But magically, this is where the market flow traders start looking for long trades. You know, yellow white paint bar combinations, yellow paint bars, stranded sellers with antenna yellow bars. So instead of just you know, taking 20 ticks and sitting around waiting for this over here, you're already long. 
because you had a market flow that said so. So again, when to stop trading or termination spots as they're commonly referred to are also the same spots where the market flow gives you the bonus going the other way. So again, look, if it's trending and everything's going up and you're a little on the wrong side of the triggers on your 5-1 chart, white paint bar down, this is exactly what it's going to look like when you go long at the market. Triggers are up, fibs are good, triggers are up, fibs are good. White paint bar down, market order, you'll be filled somewhere around here depending on how fast it's going with the anticipation that it's going to give a reversal before it ever gets a reversal. And again, look, this is pretty much, look, there's two things you can do. Wait for a signal when the small triggers are on the wrong side, or if they're real strong, you get in with the white paint bar down. If there wasn't a white paint bar down, which I think I have a picture of this coming up in a minute, but then you wait for a bar up. You don't have to just jump in. Uh, again, look, remember this one? Perfect spot over here on the left. White paint bar down, just jump in. And then ultimately, you know, you're not quite sure. Maybe you should go, maybe you shouldn't. Then if you get a signal, you can go. Um, I wanted to give you that initial one because this is the second half of that over here. So this white circle way up here at the top that was the early one that we did with the market flow remember right here so and again we got out at the fibs and the high volume area but you know we know we're going to go short again remember what we said about location of the small triggers and the large triggers relative to the synthetic triggers on our bigger charts you know, we know we're looking for shorts, but the market makes a bigger retracement. And, you know, we want to go short. And, you know, again, the the new traders are going to look right here and say, well, that's where lines come together with the 8-2 triggers. And then they get stopped out and then they watch it go down. And they're like, well, why did I lose? And, you know, again, look, if you come from some type of support... You know, this is where when you have the eye on the market flow, it kind of helps you out a little bit because you're looking right here, but you can see, you know, we get a white paint bar up into the high volume area. Even if you lost, you have to go again. But, you know, hopefully this look on the market flow and needing to get back to the bottom of the synthetic triggers, you know, and coming off of support will eliminate this loss and this market flow will add the win to what you're doing. And then ultimately, you know, look, as you start to get down into support and you have divergence potential, you have to start paying attention to the market flow. Because, you know, when the market flow has a hard time going down and starts to give a lot of buy signals, you know, this is where the market runs out of steam and we end up, you know, closing the gap up to a synthetic trigger. So, again, I don't want to be too complicated, but, you know, the idea is to buy low, sell high, right? Which brings in our, you know, trading from the edges video, which we're not going to go all the way through here. But the short recap is divergence and you're at the edge and you're looking for some kind of signal. Right? Get in at the spot and hope for the best. That's not comfortable for some people. Right? The idea is to place a limit order at the low and hope it goes back up with your great fib and trigger line reading. Some of you guys just aren't going to be that comfortable. Um, so you might get to the spot. You might say, hey, I'll take it, but, you know, I'm chicken. I'm not comfortable or it's not quite perfect. Whatever you want to say, whatever your rules are and how you address these types of trades. I like getting in assertively, and if they run you over, they run you over. It's over. You know, so the correct order is to be short up here at the fibs and the pivot stop out. But you don't give up too much waiting for confirmation. So, you know, again, personal preference, but how you can use the software to, you know, allay your fears of actually executing the trade, or especially if you're with the trading system, you can turn on the system or a reversal bar here. 
So stranded buyers with an antenna bar at a pivot stop out that meets all the rules. Yes, it did win, by the way. So again, same thing, right? And then when once you're in, you know, you see that if you got in first on the way up and then you see this bar, you're like, yay. And then if you got in after this bar and the second bar is a white paint bar, you're like double yay, right? So that w second white paint bars are great confirmation. You know, fibs and high volume areas are great places for targets. One of the other things that we spend a lot of time talking about are gaps to the synthetic triggers. And again, this is kind of a funny little picture that we made where, you know, you get this tension and the market pulls back so far and you get to some fibs and it tends to go back towards the synthetic triggers if they don't come along. Well, you know, you can have just regular charts running like your 14.2 and your 5.1 and you can say, hey, I'll take a pivot stop out and just be brave and place a limit order down there. Because I see that we have a big gap back to the synthetic triggers. Or you may turn on your automated strategy and say, if I get a market flow signal, I will allow the signal to get me in just in case it doesn't. And notice when you got close, no signal. And then when you actually hit it, you got stranded sellers with an antenna bar. Hmm, said that more than once, haven't we? Anyway, the market flow is a one bar event from a pivot stop out spot. If the one bar that makes the pivot stop out doesn't give you a signal, it's not going to. It's, it's literally over. Um, so again, same concept up here. Pivot stop out, I want to take it because things are good, but I need the bar to confirm. And again, down here, same thing. I want to take it, but I'm not quite sure, so I'll wait for the bar. And again, personal preference. You guys will have to trade, you know, how it makes you most comfortable. But once you see it, it'll hopefully will start making a lot of sense to you. Um, again, look, market's going down, you do your perfect trend trade, and you get divergence, and you're like, darn it, it's not going to keep going. So you get out after the second bar up, which would confirm divergence. So you don't lose any money knowing that the triggers are weak on the 14.2 chart. Again, very important to be able to read your triggers properly. Where are we going to go up to? I wonder. One to one, synthetic triggers, gap closed, and a pivot stop out. If you get a market flow signal at that spot after you close the gap, take the short. Yellow paint bar short signal, boom, you're short. And then the second bar is white. You say, yay. <laughs> right? And hopefully you make it to the fibs. That, so, you know, in the beginning, when you're only doing the one perfect trade and you get out with divergence, you're stuck. There's no other trade for you to do. You just have to sit and wait till the next perfect trade. Well, we know where it's going. We know it's going to the fib and we know the triggers are going to hold it. And we know there's a pivot stop out and we use the market flow signal to, to get us in. If there's no signal, there's no trade. Again, you'll see this a lot as you uh, start to watch the software. The top's in place, very important. The market bounced off of something. We pull back to the synthetic triggers. No signal, a bunch of dots in the signal. A yellow antenna bar is a signal. And then you go short, and then the next bar is white, and you say, yay. All right, so again, look, I don't want to diminish the perfect look but you don't need the market flow for a perfect look I mean the perfect look is the perfect look you take them and you know hope that they work right if all three charts say the same thing at the same spot that's the mother load that's the perfect one that's the one you're gonna take you don't need the market flow for that trade if it helps then great but you don't need it Here's an example of the market flow. Forget about the left chart for a second. Visualize on the right, we have pivot stop out, fibs, and 8-2 triggers right here. So perfect trend trade long. We break a fib, and then lo and behold, fibs and mid bands and 8-2 triggers. It's perfect. And then because of the large chart, we say we'll do one more because the large chart says we're going to break. So 
Again, 8-2 triggers with the mid-band and fibs is a really good look. If you're a little nervous, wait for a market flow signal. And then we break out. And then now when we get to the spot, see where this big purple arrow is? Our small triggers are going down pretty well, pretty sharply below the 8-2s. So as long as these small triggers are above the 8-2s, you know, it's a pretty assertive entry on the way down into the spot. Once we start getting below, this is where we wait for the market flow. So, and you don't have to have a signal, you just have to have a bar. So, you know, if there's no bar, there's no trade, but if there's a bar, you know, this is where just buying any next reversal bar is going to be good. I mean, triggers are good, triggers are good, the area is good. Um, so it's not terribly difficult, which is the types of trades you want to take anyway. But obviously, um, you know, waiting for that confirmation really makes people very, very comfortable. And again, reading your fibs and triggers to know if you should or if you need to start stopping those types of trades. In our trend trade video, we went through a section for, you know, termination conditions. And, you know, the trend is your friend until it ends. And for 20 plus years, we've been refining when you should or, you know, should no longer take a trend trade. And like we say, the high and high, moderately high probability trades are going to give you, you know, nice consistency, nice and easy and confidence. Low probability trades aren't going to work. So when we talk about termination conditions, when we talk about, you know, the triggers are too strong, so don't go short. Or when the triggers are inside of the fibs and we're no longer going to do a trend trade, right? Termination condition. At the termination condition spot, this is where the market flow pays dividends. If you get a, you know, yellow white paint bar or something along those lines, some type of signal that says short up here, you don't have to wait for anything else. If it's a termination spot and condition, you can use the market flow to go the other way. You know, if it's perfectly trending down, you're not going to miss that. That's everybody's getting that one. And then you get to the fib and you're like, eh, not quite sure. But then you get a pivot stop out with triggers inside. This is where the market flow will pay dividends again. If it gives the right buy signals, you'll be able to go long. If not, it'll probably break the FIB area. So again, just, you know, I hate to repeat the same thing a million times in all the videos, but it is really the same thing over and over. You're going to go long right here. 100% guaranteed almost every single time. The triggers are too good and everything's going up strong. When you get your pivot stop out, and you've got the big gap back to your triggers. This is where the market flow might kick you in the butt to get that trade. You see it? I know it's a little hard to see, but termination condition spots are the places where market flow signals really thrive to go the other way. So, you know, again, look, pretty easy trend trade shorts until you get down to FIPS on the small chart. Well, fibs and a pivot stop out on the small chart usually get us back up to the synthetic triggers. So if you're good at taking pivot stop out trade, great. If you're not, the market flow signal here may help you out. And then once you close the gap to the synthetic triggers and the fibs, what are you going to do? Well, you don't have a trade for that, do you? Of course you do. If you get a market flow signal from the triggers, you can go short. Same thing, you know, again, look, at the bottom, when you hit the fibs and the termination spot, that's where the market flow thrives. The market flow thrives at a pivot stop out. Sometimes they don't follow through and then, you know, you revert back to the number one trades again. So again, you're kind of alternating between perfect looks and then, you know, really good looks on the market flow to add money to it. Um, same situation here. If you have a key reversal at the top, you know, if you had a high volume line and a market flow and triggers going down here, you might be short. Or if it happened over here, you might be short. 
Whereas if you're waiting for the perfect trade, you're not going to get a trade until you get over here. Right? So again, that's what the market flow is for. Or look at this one. You see right here on the left? You're going to do the trend trade long from the mid band, but it doesn't quite get there. Well, if you had a white paint bar down into the spot, you'd go early. And you'd get the trade that nobody else would get. <clears throat> Same thing here. Termination conditions on the chart. You're going to look at the market flow. Um, now, two ways to handle the market flow. You can run the indicator and you can do things manually, which most people prefer. But some like to use the automation. Before you use the market flow strategy. Make sure that your charts are correct. You know, again, I think I've stressed this enough today, right? Make sure that the fib and trigger line reading is correct. Make sure you haven't hit a target or termination spot. And make sure you know the look of the trade that you're going to do. Why are you going to do it? Where are you going to do it? And how are you going to do it so you can be consistent? <clears throat> to turn on the strategy... You know, again, if you've got the indicator version template, you know, you can do one of two things. You can turn off the chart trader and delete the indicator, which is a bit tedious. Or you can just apply the template for the strategy itself. And the only difference between these two templates is it'll delete the market flow indicator from your charts and turn off the uh, chart trader. So you can do it manually or you can do it with the template. That's the only difference between the templates. Um, once you actually get on your chart and you right click on your chart out in the, you know, somewhere out in the red or blank space, <clears throat> then you're going to cl left click on strategies. And then the box is going to come up where you actually apply the strategy. Double click on it up here to make sure it loads down here. And again, if you don't double click it or, or click highlight it and click new, it won't get down here and you won't have it. <clears throat> then you can format your inputs. And then super, super, super important to turn it on, you have to enable the system to true. A lot of people have a hard time with this for some reason. I'm not sure why, but you know they forget to enable their strategy all the time. And they're like, it's not working. And it's like, well, turn it on. So anyway, that's that spot. <clears throat> now, then they turn their strategy on and they start trying to change the inputs. And before you change your inputs, disable your system. Seriously, it won't change the inputs while the system is enabled. So enable it to false and click apply, then change inputs. Change it to false to change the inputs. Yes, seriously. Turn it off, click apply, seriously, change it to false. I, I did this because it's a little dramatic. I've never been dramatic before, but 4,000 times in a row, somebody asked about this. So make it false, change your input, re make it true, turn it back on, you'll be good to go. <clears throat> now, this is the Ninja Trader 7 version. We're not quite done with the Ninja Trader 8 market flow strategy as of January 2020. It won't be long. Um, over the years, we've you know we've learned some things, and you know there's two signals that by default are going to be false: um, the high volume lines and then the arrows that follow a white paint bar. And again, those are the two trades where you need to make sure that the triggers are correct. So those are the two trades that you do manually yourself, even if you have the strategy running. Um, most people will run the antenna, white paint bar, yellow paint bar, and stranded buyers and sellers. And then the double signals, it was a good idea, but we're going to take them out. You know, if you have a yellow paint bar and it's on, you're going to be in right away. <laughs> so you don't need to wait for the white one. Um, so these are going to be eliminated. A little bit of cleanup, but you get the idea. Um, this one's real important, guys. Number 25. When you enable your strategy and you take a signal, it's going to turn off. And if you have input number 25 set to false, it's going to keep trading and trading and trading and trading and trading. 
<clears throat> I have one guy I said, well, I changed it to false to see what would happen on my live account, and I lost $5,000. I'm like, well, you know, so really, 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 really important to make sure that this is true and that every time you're actually turning it on, you know the trade you want to take. If not, <clears throat> it's going to do... The short, the long, the long, the long, the short, the long, the short. It's going to do trade after trade after trade after trade. So just trust me on this one. Leave it to true. Disable the system after a signal. Manually change that and you'll be good to go. Um, if the system is enabled and you're at the spot where you want to take a trade, whatever spot it is, this isn't it, but let's just say... You only want to do a trade if there's one of your four market flow signals that you designated. This is the long on, short on. Only market flow signals if these buttons are pushed, period. It won't just get you in. It has to actually have a yellow paint bar, white paint bar, antenna bar, or stranded sellers or buyers. That's it. So if it just gives a regular old reversal bar, it's just not going to do anything for you. So if you're at a spot where you want to get in regardless, come hell or high water, right? I want to buy this no matter what, then you can use the buy next reversal or sell next reversal. But if you push it and you're enabled, the next bar you're getting in, period. Or, you know, if you push it, you're getting in the next bar, period. So... Again, these are the spots where you know you want to do a trade and you don't care what bar comes. You just want to get in on a reversal with a little confirmation. Now, when the system gets you in, um, again, and it's nice to understand mechanics here. Let's assume you turn on your strategy and you said, hey, I'll go short if I get a signal and then you get a yellow paint bar. So the system now will automatically generate your orders for you. Stops, targets, get you into your trade, place your entry order, do everything for you. So what it will do is that now this is where those two little black high volume lines that we talked about on the first slide come in. Because the system is going to read where was the most volume, which is very important. And then the system is going to read how many seller dots are in the bar. So by default, and you can change this or you can play with it, but by default, there's three ticks lower than the high volume low. So, you know, if you count one, two, three, and then the limit order would go in right there. Well, with input number 23 using dynamic limit entry, what we have found is the more magenta dots in a cell signal, usually the faster this thing runs away. So in this case, what it would do is it takes when the dynamic, it takes these three ticks and then adds three more because of the three magenta dots. So instantly at the close of this bar, which would be one tick lower, right over here, it would say, okay, place a cell limit order quick from the high volume area, six ticks down and you'd be short from around right there. <clears throat> so again, you know, how much or many ticks you want to give up, you're going to have to do some market replay and see what the right number is for you and your market and what you're doing. But anyway, it's just important to understand the mechanics. And you can turn off the dynamic if you don't want to add ticks, but I've never heard of anybody being happy with that. Um, the exception to this one is if you have an antenna bar, because antenna bars are a little special. Typically, and you know, in the beginning years ago, we we're like, man, we're missing every trade that's an antenna bar waiting to pull back to the high volume area because it usually doesn't go back and check it out. So what we did is we changed the strategy to put the limit order for an antenna bar above the high. So we're actually giving up a couple ticks. So when you get, let's just say you were enabled and you said long signal on after the antenna bar, it would place a limit order to buy two ticks above the prior bar's high. So if it runs quick, it gets you in and you don't miss the trade. If it does retrace a little bit, you just have to sit through it. In the trading plan itself on page number six, 
Um, you know, there's some older market flow videos, which yeah, they're kind of interesting and maybe fun to watch. Um, and you can see how we start using, I mean, this is like from 2016, so you can kind of see an evolution on how we're starting to use it. We've really evolved a long way over the last few years and probably will for the next few. Uh, but then this video number seven is a really recent video of actually using the strategy and place and trades and how to do it on a live market. So watch this video on page number six of the trading plan is number seven. And then, you know, I say this a million times and it's not enough. Make sure you're following the rules and make sure you're following the correct Feb and trigger line reads. Make sure you're not trading in determination conditions. Make sure you have room to your targets before you play with the market flow. <clears throat> and then, you know, again, one of the most important things you know, we've had thousands and, you know, maybe tens of thousands of clients, probably over a hundred thousand people total come through next gen. And those that make a spreadsheet and track their trades usually end up winning. Those that don't tend to fail. And it doesn't matter how long you try. It doesn't matter how long you practice. The people who track the look that they're trading in a spreadsheet usually end up winning. If you don't, you're probably going to lose. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know how else I can say that. That's pretty, pretty definitive, right? In this sheet, we've put these, each of these is a link to pictures. These are all the things that we talk about in all the videos. And it's just kind of a little refresher and, you know, some examples of, you know, termination conditions. Which, you know, look, in the beginning, this column says stop taking 5-1 trend trades. But once you really get good at software, instead of, you know, if you can't go short, go long. Or if you can't go long, go short. And this is where this last column of the market flow in this video that we're making today really comes into play. Right? It's called extra money. But what you need to do is you need to be comfortable in the looks that you're taking. And if you don't do the spreadsheet, you're not going to have the greatest chances of success. And if you're going to do that, I mean, why do it at all? So please track your trades and post your charts in the room so we can make sure you're doing it right. And then finally, to reiterate, the only thing that you can control is the look of your indicators prior to your entry. You do not have any other control. This is why it's imperative that you have the right look, that you have a definitive look that you use over and over. You've got the right fibs and triggers. And I want you to recite this a hundred times a day for the first month or two. My look is my trade was. This is magic right here, guys. My look is my trade was. When you can answer those two questions and you do it over and over, and more importantly, you track it in the spreadsheet, you're going to end up being a winner. I mean, not a guarantee, but I haven't seen anybody lose yet that does it. My look is, my trade was, and I know I'm going to be a winner. And when you make sure you're not at the wrong spot, <laughs> right? Think, do I have room to target with this look? Can't, you know, I mean, look, we try to lose less than 100 bucks or 10 bucks on a micro anyway, but... What was my result and track it. <clears throat> Define the looks you're going to trade from the high volume area lines, prior highs and lows at Fibonacci areas, the pivot stopouts, trend trades, and the tracking on your spreadsheet is the only way to guarantee yourself that you have a look that's repeatable, that's profitable day in and day out, year in and year out. We're on year 23 with NextGen. We know you can do it, but you have to do it. If you don't do the work, you're not going to get the fruit, right? So again, really heed this warning. Make sure you fill in that spreadsheet. Make sure you take pictures. Make sure you post them in class. The class is not to be entertained. The class is not to teach you anything. Everything that you need to learn is in the videos on the education page. The class is to 
validate, right? What do you need to write on each chart for class? And then post those charts in the class. That is the secret sauce right there. If you do those two things, annotate your chart on why you did the look, what the look was, and what was the result, you're going to get the magic. So again, I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate you guys being with NextGen. I really feel after 23 years, this may be the last NextGen video we ever need to make. I don't think there's anything else that you're going to need as far as education, which is a really exciting uh, feeling. I always say that, but then I end up, you know, we end up going further and doing better. A little bit better every year for 23 years straight. We want you guys to be able to catch up to the profitable, experienced traders as quickly as possible. And the shortcut is right here. Do this right here and you're going to catch up to the most profitable next-gen traders in you know, months and months and months. And within a year, you'll be right there with them. So I look forward to seeing everybody in class. I look forward to seeing all of your posts. And I look forward to your success with next-gen. Thank you.